Good morning friends, it is a beautiful Monday morning here in Melbourne and I'm hoping it is going to be a good sign for a great week. It's 9.30 and I'm ready because I'm about to go head into Footscray and meet mum at Savers. Just our usual mother and daughter Monday. I also need to drop my library books back. I don't even know if you can see my outfit. What if I come back here? Yep, bright pink pants. You can't have a bad day wearing bright pink pants. They are Lee. Anyway, I do need to get going and I thought I'd take you along with me, but one thing I wanted to talk to you about this week uh, is my screen time is out of hand. I just got my notification for my screen time for last week. My average was, can you see that? Eight hours. Eight hours and five minutes a day. The week before was seven hours and 57 minutes. The week before, seven hours. So it's been high for a while, but it's trending upwards. To be fair, I'm well aware that I'm never gonna be one of those girlies who only use my phone for an hour a day. I watch videos on my phone. I play word games on my phone. I shop on my phone. I Marco Polo my friends and family quite a lot. So there's some things that I do not wanna cut down, but I do feel like since I hurt my hand and the things that I used to fill my time with, for example, reading. Obviously I haven't been able to do a lot of those things nearly as much. And so I think in part to fill that time, but also to distract myself from the physical pain, I've been scrolling an awful lot. And I'm not mad at myself for doing that the last couple of months, but I do want to start bringing that down. I don't have a particular number in mind. I honestly don't even remember what my like pre-injury screen time like basis line is, but I know one thing, and eight hours is more than I wanna be spending on my phone a day. Honestly, I will be happy with anything under like seven, seven and a half hours a day, which is still a lot, but we're not looking to like completely change my life overnight. We're looking to turn the tide. So I think getting out of the house and spending the morning with my mum is the perfect way to avoid excessive scrolling. Oh shit, mum's early, she's already there, so we need to go. And also, I'm gonna take Ollie. Friends, it is Wednesday. Yes, oh my <laughs> my cup's stuck to my coaster. One of my best friends in the world, Annie, made me this. It's this very cute sparkly coaster and it says Hope World, uh, which is J Hope, my bias from BTS's uh, first kind of like solo album, which I love. It's almost 10.30 and I'm just kind of getting my day started. And for those of you paying attention, yes, we skipped Tuesday. I didn't really film too much yesterday because I didn't have a great day. And I've already put myself crying on the internet fairly recently. I don't, I didn't, I didn't really want to do it again so soon. So not a great day yesterday, a terrible night's sleep last night, but I'm up, I'm up. I've got my cup of tea, I'm dressed and I'm ready to have an okay day. And I suppose I do have a couple of things to catch you up on. We've got my savers haul from Monday, I've got my reading, and then my screen time. How is that going? Let's check in. What should we do first? How about the screen time? Well, Monday and Tuesday, I feel like I was doing really well. My average so far for the week is four hours and, what is that, three minutes? Like, obviously that is such a huge improvement. That is so much better than I thought I would do. Like I said, I was hoping for like seven hours, but four, honestly, I don't think we're gonna keep it that low because obviously I'm already almost at, what are we at today? We're at three hours and 55 minutes and it's 10.30 in the morning. So today is not trending as well as the previous two days have. The reason the time is so high already today is because last night I just couldn't sleep and so I ended up playing my word game, Wordscapes, for like three hours last night. This game, Wordscapes, is my favorite. I just love it. I've been playing it for literally years and look how cute my little guy is. So my screen time, I feel like is doing really well. Today is not the best example of how well I've been doing. But now that I'm up, I am going to try to limit how much I am on for the rest of the day. It's not gonna be zero. It's not gonna stay at that four hour kind of average. But I'd say if we can keep it to six, 
If we can keep it to six today, I feel like that would be really good. Now for my reading. If you watched last vlog, I was reading Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. I got this out from the library, but I had to return it, so I ended up getting myself a copy. I have been very slow and steadily making my way through this. I ha I'm up to page 54, which is very slow, but we're getting there. It's still kind of heading in the same direction as I mentioned in the last video. This is kind of like a like a mystery. There is a murder, but it's not a murder mystery because you know who's been murdered, but you're trying to figure out why. And to do so, we're going back in time. Right now, Jen, our main character, is sort of in that, the thralls of like, what the fuck is happening? And trying to like, figure out if she's going mad or if she really is stuck in a time loop. But now let's move swiftly on to my haul, my savers haul. I feel like I scored. I did really well for like, some extra pieces for my winter wardrobe. I got this lovely wool black coat. It was looking a little rough, but I've gone over it with, you know, like a fabric shaver thingy, whatever they're called, a debobbler. And now it looks like it's like a year old instead of like 20 years old. It's from Paddington Coats. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. Doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but I just love it. I love how it fits me. It's a little bit oversized, but it still has a really pretty kind of like A-line shape to it. And as much as I love wearing color and most of my jackets, are colorful. It's it's nice to have a staple black one. Then I got two knits. I got this first one which is just an old Target. I think it's it says Australian cotton but it does have the little Target logo uh, and it's just like this red reasonably high v-neck. I do wish the red was like a slightly cooler red because I've learned that well I'm pretty sure I'm a bright winter if you know you know but I still think that like saturated colors in general just tend to look better on me than like muted pastel kind of colors. And I just loved this one, how it fit, the thickness, all of it. So I couldn't say no. Then a piece I was super excited about because it's a brand that I really quite like is Bowden. I honestly never buy anything from Bowden unless it's like like 30% off their sale price. But I do have a few Bowden pieces, including a couple of jackets, which are my favorites. Anyway, I found this really cute, just like quite lightweight navy knit and the trim on the neck and the cuffs is magenta. I just love that. Kind of like a really simple basic piece with a little bit of flair. And again, it just fit me great. It's lovely. And then finally, something to more wear around the house is like this poncho. <laughs> I think it's from Uniqlo and it feels like wool. And it's just really pretty. It's like all different purples, like a brighter purple, a deeper purple and some greens. And it was just really cozy. And I feel like it's just gonna be the perfect thing to rug up in just like chilling in the house, watching telly or something during the winter. Anyway, I'm really happy with that haul and I just love that I got a couple of extra winter basics to spice up my winter wardrobe as we go into the cooler months. Okay, so now we're all caught up on the last couple of days. What are we doing today? Honestly, I've been kind of dreading today. I have a couple of appointments and we all know how I feel about appointments at the moment. I have a psychologist appointment at midday and then I have a doctor's appointment almost immediately after. In the meantime though, I'm just gonna try my best to keep off my phone. The weather isn't great. I was hoping we could go for a walk today and I'm sure we still will, but it won't be like a big, long, lovely walk that I was hoping for. Also, I think earlier today, it would be nice to get a little bit more reading done because I think the longer I leave it, the more tired I'm gonna get and the harder that's gonna be. And then I have also been watching, what is it, Next in Fashion on Netflix, which I have been really enjoying, which I know is still technically screen time, but to me, like I rarely watch TV, so it feels like a very different kind of screen time and I'm okay with that. Honestly, it's the phone time that I need to get down specifically. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy my cup of tea. And also I need to do something about my hair. <laughs>
Good evening friends. It is just after six o'clock on Thursday evening, which obviously means I didn't I didn't talk to you very much today, did I? I did have an okay day. I was feeling a little bit more emotional uh, this morning and I think a bit more anxious. Anxious is probably the emotion I was feeling the most today. So I did dress up in my incredible new skirt and like as much color as I possibly could. I loved my outfit today. I feel like since I hurt my hand, I haven't really been dressing in the way that I normally dress. I've been like sticking with my comfy tracky dacks and like an oversized sweater. Sweater, that's very American. I've been talking to Sammy Menzo too much. Jumper, a jumper. So I think without even realizing it this week, I have been trying to dress more like me again. And that has been bringing me a lot of joy. The thing that's been making me most anxious today. And I think the thing that like made me quite distracted during the day and not wanting to like pick up the camera and talk is my hand therapist and dealing with my hand therapist. She seems like a great hand therapist and I've had some mostly pretty positive experiences with her. But one thing I've really struggled with is like her timeliness and getting her to like fill out the forms and send the letters that she needs to send. It's just been an ongoing problem. And I think I mentioned in my last video, last week after we got my MRI back, she recommended hydrotherapy, which I was totally keen for. I've bought a swimsuit, I'm ready to go. And so I contacted her earlier in the week and she didn't get back to me. And so I tried calling again today and I was waiting to hear back from her. And I, it was just, I just feel tired. And I know it's just a small thing, you know, reaching out to somebody to ask for a referral. But I think the thing with this hand injury and with work cover in general, it just feels like I've said time and time again, I feel like I'm project managing my own recovery. There's so many moving parts and supposedly I had a caseworker, but like I am the one who has to contact like my hand surgeon, my hand therapist, my GP, my psychologist, my case manager, my, my manager at work, the HR at work. I'm the one who has to talk to all of these people, make sure they all have the right documents, make sure they all are up to date with everything. I know that I'm complaining a lot. I just, you know, at the end of the day, I can't start the therapy that I need until she has, you know, done her part of it. And I keep asking her to do her part of it, but it doesn't seem like she has yet. And so I suppose it's frustrating and it's, it's that powerlessness creeping in, right? Of like me knowing what I need to be doing, but not being able to access it until somebody else does something for me. I wanna get better. I wanna do all the right things to get better, but I just have to wait for all the puzzle pieces to click in. And those puzzle pieces are controlled by other people. So yes, I was a little bit upset and frustrated and anxious today, but at least I look damn cute doing it. I did also read a little bit last night, not much, just a chapter. So I don't really have too much to update you in terms of plot, but I'm still liking it. And then I suppose my screen time, how's that doing? I feel like it should be doing pretty well today. Ooh, oh, I'm kind of killing it today. So yesterday uh, we were hoping to stick to under six hours. I didn't quite, I got to six hours and 25 minutes. But today so far, I feel like I'm doing really good. I'm still under three hours and it's, you know, 20 past six. So as you can see, this week is looking a hell of a lot better than last week was. Like I said, I was hoping to get down my average by like an hour a day, but so far I've, I've halved it. Anyway, I think for this evening, I'm just gonna chill. I might try and read a little bit. I'm still watching Next in Fashion, the first season. I'm re-watching that at the moment. Also on the topic of my reading, I know several people um, in the comments of my last two videos have asked about audiobooks. And honestly, that was even something that I wasn't able to read or listen to. Uh, for quite a while. I think it's a bipolar thing where like sensory overload and like cognitive like impairment, all of that sort of stuff can come up for me. And so audiobooks, there's something about it that it almost feels like it's scratching my brain. And even though I can hear each individual word, it's really hard for me to put them together. Sometimes I can get so unwell that I can like not really understand just people talking to me. Uh, I haven't been that unwell in a long time, thankfully. But I think like a month ago, had I tried to be listening to audiobooks, I just, I might have been able to understand a few minutes of it, but I wouldn't have been able to just like listen to 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour of it, if that makes sense. However, I have been starting to think the last couple of days that maybe I am up to that again now. And I also realized that it's a new month, so I would have received my new Libro ALCs. Every month, because I'm an influencer, I get access to some audiobooks through Libro FM. Oh, and this month they've offered us heaps. Going through all of these will increase my screen time a little bit, but I think it'll be worth it. I'm gonna go have a look at all of these and see if any in particular jump out at me. And I think 
could like engage me at the moment. And maybe this weekend I can start an audiobook. So let's do that. Let's pick an audiobook and see if we can get stuck into that this weekend. friends and welcome to the end of the week. I just realized I'm actually wearing two pieces that we got from Savers this week. I've been wearing this lovely Bowden knit all day and then it's been a bit chilly this evening so I threw on my, what are we calling this? My little poncho thing. I had a little bit of like a monochromatic look today but I mean still some super fun pants. So I think I, I know it sounds silly, but just sort of dressing more me again has been one of the highlights of this week for me. There were a number of reasons why I kind of stopped dressing how I normally dress after I hurt my hand. Obviously when you're down and depressed, the idea of putting too much thought into an outfit is just kind of like above and beyond <laughs> you a lot of the time. But then also just like physically the restrictions I had with what clothing I could wear comfortably, you know, like I had to think about, you know, going to the bathroom <laughs> and like what pants I could put on and off easily enough by myself. I still am fairly restricted in that sense. Like I can't wear jeans really at this stage, but you know, I am able to wear some of my like drawstring pants now, which is nice. Basically I can very clumsily do a bow by myself most of the time. Obviously reading is still something that I'm kind of, I'm struggling with it. I'm aiming to read about a chapter a day, but that is very slow going. And for someone who's used to reading like a book every couple of days, it's hard not to get frustrated with myself. And also I do think there's something to be said for how much it slows down the, like the pace of a book. I feel like a book like the one that I'm reading at the moment, wrong place, wrong time. It's the kind of book that feels very pacey and I can imagine if you read it all quite quickly, it would be quite thrilling. But instead, because I'm only diving in and diving out from time to time, although I am still liking it and I'm finding it compelling enough to want to read, the fact that I'm only able to read a chapter every day or so, it just is, it's kind of like eliminating a level of that momentum and thrill. Speaking of my reading, the other thing that I tried, I actually did try an audiobook. I picked the Maggie Smith one. What's it called? You Could Make This Place Beautiful, a memoir by Maggie Smith. I chose it because I thought it was Maggie Smith, like Dame Maggie Smith. You know, Harry Potter, Downton Abbey, like icon. <laughs> of course it's not. It's by an American poet and author. Uh, and like I stuck with it for a little bit, but one, my comprehension and kind of like focusing on it was still a little bit hard for me. And two, it's basically at least the beginning is about, you know, like the crumbling of a marriage and a divorce of a woman that I, I don't know. <laughs> and I think I read somewhere that she's a poet. And so like, it's, it's very wordy and kind of like high concept. Like there was this whole paragraph about ellipses. <laughs> and I feel like that is the sort of like literary stuff that I would love sometimes. But right now when my brain is kind of like functioning at a bare minimum, it's all just a little bit much for me. But I'm just wondering if I'm not quite there yet with audiobooks. Maybe I should start trying to 
to listen to some podcasts again instead. In fact, I think I'm a little bit behind on speaking of which, so maybe that's something I could do next week instead of trying an audiobook. Anyway, the other thing we were talking about this week was my screen time. How have I gone? I am honestly absolutely chuffed with how I've gone reducing my screen time so far this week. So it's nearly nine o'clock on Friday evening and this is the situation so far. I hope you can see that okay but basically my average so far is less than five hours a day. So I know for many of you that will still seem like a very high number but as you can see I am down 44% on average from last week which is honestly just incredible. I'm so proud of myself. Like I said at the beginning I'm not one of those people who I don't think I could ever get down to only using my phone for like an hour a day. I use my phone for a lot and a lot of the things that I do on my phone bring a lot of like positive value to my life like chatting with my friends and family on Marco Polo. It's the mindless scrolling and also for me lately the kind of like internet shopping browsing kind of thing that I've been doing. I sort of fell into that trap after I hurt my hand and like not being able to kind of do so many of the things that I normally do. You know on Instagram you get advertised so many things that you end up shopping. I just, I don't, I couldn't help it. And I did buy more new things than I normally would in the past three months. A lot of those things are still on the way so we're probably going to have a couple of hauls in future videos and I'm not going to be like beating myself over the head when those things arrive or trying to like guilt trip myself for what I've already bought but I just knew that I, I didn't want to keep it going you know it was a pattern that I didn't want to develop into a long-term habit and I wasn't sure we were going to do this but I think I think we should do Grady Tarot again what do you reckon let me go grab a deck it's got to be the Sasserai Vito doesn't it as with last time I can't shuffle so I'm just going to cut the deck until something jumps out at me and if you missed it last week uh basically this is an exercise created by Carrie Mallon where you draw a card from a tarot deck or an oracle deck and use that card as a prompt for something to be grateful for. Okay, we have the Knight of Swords. In a lot of ways, I do feel like this is a nice kind of way to sum up my week. I feel like at the beginning of the week, I had a pretty clear idea of what some of my problem areas were that I wanted to work on. And I made a pretty clear, decisive plan about how I was going to tackle those things. One very obvious example that we've been talking about in this video is my screen time. And I think even if you kind of look at the image where we've got this character like slicing through this beautiful ornate butterfly. To me and how I'm viewing it right now is almost like the choice to slice through the distractions. To bring clarity and to allow space to focus on what matters to you. Rather than giving over all your attention and therefore time to kind of the pretty things that are put in front of you. I do feel like this week really focusing on my screen time and getting it down so much more than I even thought I could I feel like I've kind of broken the spell that it had over me the past couple of months. So I'm grateful that I was able to identify that as an issue this week and to kind of take back control a little bit of my attention and my time. I'd love to hear if either this card brings up any ideas of gratitude for you or if you do this exercise for yourself at home. So whatever you're doing this weekend, I hope you find some space and time for yourself and for the people and things that you love. Thanks again so much for joining me this week and just uh, sharing the week with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. A big thank you as always to my very kind, understanding patrons, especially Livia, Lynette Brown and Marie. And I will see you again next week. Bye. Mm. Oh, it's a good tea.